Senator Harry Reid is one of the worst liars ever to grace the national stage. He accused 2012 presidential candidate Mitt Romney of cheating on his taxes without any evidence, then celebrated his lie since it helped prevent Romney from becoming president. He called George W. Bush a liar who betrayed the country. He said paying taxes was voluntary, which is weird since it's not, attacked the Koch brothers as un-American, and admitted he'd rather let a child with cancer suffer than fund the government fee- piecemeal. His Senate tenure was marked by conflict and cram downs, from the Obamacare fiasco to the destruction of the filibuster, both of which, by the way, will now backfire on Democrats. Yet, there was Reid, receiving accolades yesterday for his supposedly grand tenure in the Senate. And there he was, in the pages of the the New York Times, lecturing Americans about, of all things, the supposed scourge of fake news. The New York Times tweeted, quote, much of the responsibility for separating what's real and what's fake will, f- will fall on Democrats, writes Harry Reid. Uh-huh. Here are some of Reid's other sterling advice in the New York Times. Quote, to Republicans, I say recognize the difference between campaigning and governing and between knee-jerk opposition to the accomplishments of the Obama era. Really? Reid spent his entire career opposing Republican policy in knee-jerk fashion. And what accomplishments of the Obama era are worth upholding, exactly? Reid specifically cites Obamacare. He says it's a dramatic misreading of your mandate to destroy it, even though Obama never had a clear mandate to pass Obamacare, and the public spent the next six years destroying the Democrats for misreading their mandate in passing that monstrosity. Reid wrote to Democrats, I say it has never been more important to stand up for the things we believe in. We are entering a new gilded age. Uh, nobody's gotten richer off government than Reid. He spent his entire life in government making about 190000 bucks a year, and now he's worth somewhere between 3 and $10 million. The Clintons are wealthy because of political backscratching, too. He wrote, quote, much of the responsibility for separating what is real and what is fake will fall on Democrats. Again, this is nuts. Reid is one of the worst liars in the history of the Senate. He also wrote, quote, when Democrats pick their fights next year, they can do so knowing that win or lose, they will be debating in a Senate that we made more open and more transparent. This is Reid defending the idiotic move of nuking the filibuster on cabinet picks. It's crippled his party going into an era of Republican leadership in the White House and Congress. Reid will significantly improve America by leaving the Senate. But recounting his legacy? Well, that should remind Americans just why Democrats should not be trusted with power. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. Oh, so much to get to today here on the Ben Shapiro Show. Plus, we're doing the mailbag today. We're broadcasting on Friday, obviously, because we missed a show earlier in the day. But we will be starting to do some Friday shows in the near future. We have some surprises planned for that, which is why you need to subscribe at DailyWire.com. But first, before we get to today's show, we have to say hello to our advertisers over at Wink. So this is the the, the company that you go to uh, for wine. So you don't know anything about wine, right? You, you don't know what wine to bring to your friend's house. Wine's really expensive. You don't know the difference between a Cabernet and a Marlowe. You don't know any of this stuff. But what you do know is what you like in terms of the food you like. So you go over to wink.com. You go over to their website. It's wink.com. And uh, it's trywink.com, rather. You go over to trywink.com. And when you go there, they have this little survey where it asks the kinds of foods that you like, what kind of food combinations you like, and then they pick a wine for you from their stock. They produce the wines themselves. The wines are really, really affordable. The, all my all my staff members have, have had their wine, and given the quality of the podcast, you would think they drink the wine all the time, but no, they usually have it only in their off hours. But they, they say that the, the wine is really, really good. Uh, they even had a wine party here that was that was really spectacular, apparently, um, and uh, they, they say the product's just great. And again, if you don't know anything about wine, but you want an affordable wine to bring over to your friend's house and make sure that you don't look like a fool, Wink is the place to go. It's trywink.com slash Ben, trywink.com slash Ben. You get 20 bucks off right now when you go to trywink.com slash Ben. They even cover the shipping. It's personalized against your palate, and the wine is apparently really, really good. All of my staffers swear by it, which means that either the wine's good or they're all alcoholics. All righty. So, today, we begin with the fact that Democrats have really given up the only tool they ever had for being able to hold Republicans in check. Uh, and, and number one, their, their, their biggest tool for holding Republicans in check for a long time was the media. Uh, they, they believed that the media would be able to stop Republicans from being terrible and vindictive and, and Republican. Uh, and now they've blown all credibility. And you can see how badly they've blown their credibility over this whole thing they've been discussing about fake news. Fake news this, fake news that. For those who have missed this controversy, Democrats have been saying now since the election that the reason Donald Trump was is because people believed fake news. Now, Democrats haven't really distinguished between headlines that are just flat out not true and messages that they don't like. So when Donald Trump says things like radical Islam is something Democrats never say and it's a threat, then a lot of people will say, well, that's fake news. I've heard Democrats say the word radical Islam. 
Right, but the overall message is true, and he was making an overstatement, but obviously he didn't mean for it to be taken literally. Fake news is like Pizzagate. Pizzagate is fake news because there's no evidence that Pizzagate is real, that there's this, this sex slavery ring being run out of this, this pizzeria in the middle of Washington, D.C. Um, but the Democrats don't bother to make that distinction, and they never have. In fact, they've, pro- they, they've actually promulgated fake news at a routine rate as so long as it helps them. So that's actually destroyed their capacity to be fact checkers. Nobody trusts you to check the facts if you're the person who promulgated half the false stories in the first place. The same people who complain about fake news are the people who are spending literally months talking about hands up, don't shoot, right? There's that famous picture from CNN of all of their anchors doing hands up, don't shoot. And those people on CNN, those same exact people are now complaining about the scourge of fake news that drove Trump to the presidency. Well, at a certain point, we stopped listening to them. And that was real good for Donald Trump, both because it meant that we didn't listen to them when they slandered him, and it also meant that we didn't listen to them when they told the truth about him, which worked out really well for Donald Trump. It means that we're all going to have to find new sources of information, people that you trust to bring you the news. My general rule of thumb is, I mean, aside from the basic rules, like everything has to be double sourced. My general rules of thumb on news to trust, news outlets to trust, is do they ever print stories that are not in their own economic self-interest? Do they ever print stories that don't that run counter to their own narrative? Do they ever print stories that debunk things that you know that they believe? And that's usually a pretty good indicator. That's why I think the Washington Post is better than the New York Times. The New York Times rarely runs stories that run counter to kind of their leftist narrative. The Washington Post actually does sometimes. Uh, and, uh, and so I think it's a better outlet. Again, that's a quick and dirty rule of thumb. You know, Breitbart's never going to run anything that's counter to their in- interests. Infowars doesn't run stuff that's counter to their interests, and that's why those sites are, are less trustworthy. And the same thing holds true on the left. I don't trust Huffington Post because everything they run is, uh, is in the interest of their narrative. And one of the things we try to do at Daily Wire, and this is not, you know, a, this is not patting ourselves on the back, although it is, uh, is, uh, is that we try to have a, a variety of perspectives. So John Nolte, who's one of our editors at large, he and I disagree on virtually everything with regard to Donald Trump. We try to make room for that because we want opposing voice, uh, voices to be presented. In any case, the mainstream media haven't done this, and so they blew all their credibility. And here is a perfect example of how they blew all of their credibility. Uh, here is Brian Williams, who faked his own life story multiple times, right? He was in a helicopter in Iraq. He was almost shot down. He was watching bodies float by him during Hurricane Katrina. Uh, He was present at the storming of of the beaches at Normandy. Uh, He was actually on the original mission to to the moon. Uh, And uh, and now he's still on MSNBC, right? They brought him back on MSNBC after he was ousted from NBC Nightly News. Uh, And here he is decrying fake news. As we talked about here last night, fake news played a role in this election and continues to find a wide audience. A BuzzFeed news study of Donald Trump's own tweets, where they follow back news stories to their root source, found more of them came from Breitbart originally than from any other single source. And, of course, he's ripping on Breitbart as fake news. Now, as as a former employee of of Breitbart, I can say that not everything that Breitbart prints is fake news. The vast majority of what Breitbart does is aggregate. They actually just rewrite other people's stories a lot. Um, But, again, Brian Williams complaining about fake news is rather ironic. And what he doesn't note there is look at some of the other sources that, that Trump was tweeting during the campaign, right? Some of the other big sources, The Washington Post, right, FoxNews.com, The Hill, The New York Post, Daily Mail. He even tweeted The Huffington Post. A few times. Right? So the idea that a National Review, which really didn't like him very much, the idea that, that all of the people who were tweeting were, were only tweeting from Breitbart, obviously that's the biggest circle there. And yes, I think Breitbart was a Trump Pravda outlet. But that doesn't mean that every headline that came from Breitbart is fake news, nor does it mean the entire outlet can simply be thrown out with the bathwater. You actually have to evaluate each story. And there are certain reporters at Breitbart who are really quite good. I think that Charlie Spearing is a good reporter over at Breitbart. I think Aaron Klein over at Breitbart Jerusalem is a very good reporter. I think Matt Boyle is not a very good reporter, but I think there are plenty of good reporters at Breitbart, uh, even though it's an outlet that I think is uh, overall just a shilling, shilling for Trump. But again, the left blew all of its credibility here. And so when they call, when they call foul here, when they scream about, about fake news, it just doesn't resonate. I mean, Hillary Clinton is doing the same routine now. Instead of just recognizing, you guys lost the election because you ran a bad candidate and she ran an abysmal campaign and you didn't understand what a lot of Americans were complaining about. Instead, you were too busy cutting videos with, you know, with uh, Mary J. Blige, in which she's singing to you questions. Instead of just recognizing that, they're trying to blame some out, outside source cheating, whether it's the Russians cheating or whether, it is, whether it's fake news. Here's Hillary Clinton's crying fake news. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year, it's now clear that 
so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk. Lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. It's a danger to be addressed and addressed quickly. Bipartisan legislation is making its way through Congress to boost the government's response to foreign propaganda, and Silicon Valley is starting to grapple with the challenge and threat of fake news. Who's going to determine what's fake news and what's not fake news? That's really the biggest question. Now, some stuff, you know, it, it, I do want to avoid the tendency to say nothing is fake news because the media overlabel things fake news. There are things that are fake news. There are things that are fake news. Here she's saying Pizzagate is fake news, and that's what drove this guy over to this pizzeria to try and shoot it up. The problem is, the problem is that if you are going to, if you are going to, uh, you know, label everything fake news from Pizzagate to to Benghazi, right? And and you remember how the media downplayed Benghazi? They said there was nothing to see there. There certainly was something to see there. You know, the the fact that they they conflated all of that destroyed their own credibility. And so when Hillary Clinton is standing there decrying fake news, it's like, wait a second, why you don't get to do this? My, Mika Brzezinski, who's another one of these these you know kind of dicey reporters over on MSNBC, uh, she's on Morning Joe. She's she says you know Hillary can complain about fake news. Hillary complains about fake news, and then Mika this morning she says you know Hillary tried to get me thrown off air for simply saying that this was a competitive race. I was concerned the campaign was. Not understanding that uh, perhaps there was an arrogance they needed to sort of get up their high horse and understand that this isn't over. I'll just say it. NBC got a call from the campaign. Like I had had done something that was journalistically inappropriate or something and needed to be pulled off the air. Mm. I mean, think about that. Yeah. That's just it's crazy. that's that's yes, well, shooting the wrong you know. messenger. Okay, and you know the the fact that. Hillary Clinton is saying fake news, this fake news, that, and then she tried to have a reporter pulled off the air, supposedly, because that reporter uh, was was saying that this was a more competitive race. It just demonstrates how silly all of this is. Hil again, Hillary Clinton has no credibility to call out fake news because Hillary Clinton is the propagator of fake news. I mean, you remember that Hillary Clinton once claimed that her husband, all, all of the all of the circumstances surrounding her husband and Lewinsky, all of it was lies. It was all just vast right wing propaganda. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. Okay, and, and so she's been singing the same tune for 30 years. Democrats always sing the same tune when they lose. It must be that somebody lied about us. It can't be that somebody told the truth about us. The truth is, virtually all of the anti-Hillary stories were true. Virtually all the anti-Trump stories were true. Virtually none of the pro-Trump or pro-Hillary stories were true. That was sort of the, the theme of the campaign as we were pointing it out. Plus, again, Hillary Clinton, I say she's the purveyor of lies. I mean, here's just a few of her whoppers. And this, is, this was, uh, you can find these, these lies on, on YouTube. They are going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. In fact, checkers have said that she was wrong. There is no video that ISIS is using. Oh, and it seems like there's a pattern now of her claiming that videos exist that do not exist. I remember landing under sniper fire. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles uh, to get to our base. Her arrival in Bosnia was not quite as dramatic as Clinton put it. Memory should always match the videotape. And family members of the Benghazi victims are saying you lied to them in that uh, hearing. We've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over an awful internet video that we had nothing to do with. Absolutely lying. She told me something entirely different at the casket ceremony. She said it was the cause of the, the, the video and that she would get back to me and... Okay, so that's just an example of some of the lies that Hillary Clinton was telling, and there she is decrying fake news and talking about how terrible it is. Very difficult to take the Democrats seriously and the media seriously when they've blown their own credibility, which means that Trump basically has free reign. He basically has run of the place. He has run of the place. And that's either a good thing or that's a bad thing. And we'll talk about that. Uh, you have to go over to Daily Wire to subscribe because we're going to talk about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing and uh, and what comes next here. DailyWire.com to subscribe, $8 a month. And if you want an annual subscription, that, that will run you still $8 a month. But you get a, but you get, uh, you get a copy of my, uh, of my new novel, True Allegiance, autographed. I'm going to go sign a bunch in the other room. Uh, and, uh, and 
you can be part of the uh, you can be part of our podcast team. Uh, the mailbag is coming up today. You get to be part of the mailbag. We'll do li- some live mailbag today, which means we'll take your questions live on air, which is pretty exciting. And we have plenty of goodies coming. Shapiro store is coming. Lots of we're going to be rolling out lots of product in the new year, uh, and uh, you get significant discounts on all of that by becoming a subscriber over at DailyWire.com. We are the largest conservative podcast in the United States.